My name is Ben, and welcome to another episode of Film Fix, the show where I take movies that are good but not great and suggest how they might have been improved. This week, I am finishing up my two-part series on how to fix the Star Wars sequels by tackling Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker, a topic which warranted its own video because, well... I basically wrote an entirely new outline for the movie. In my film fix for the Star Wars prequels, I said I was going to talk about this if it warranted its own video, and it does. So, let's take a look at what my take on this film might have been. But real quick, before we begin, as always, let me say that I am in no way claiming that I am smarter or more talented than J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, or any of the other artists working on these films. I am a huge admirer of all of these people and hope to maybe work with them someday. And it's so much easier to pick apart someone else's work because finding flaws in your own work is harder than hitting a target three meters wide. That's impossible, even for a computer. It's not impossible. I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. They're not much bigger than two meters. Plus, there have been rumors of studio interference on the last film, so the film we received may not have been exactly the one that J.J. Abrams had originally envisioned. Sadly, this sort of thing happens all the time in the studio system, and I would not be surprised at all to discover that these rumors might be true. Regardless, without further ado, let's just talk about how to fix Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. All right, this is a hard one. The one that I have spent hours banging my head against the wall trying to fix. There are a few things I know need to be changed. Rey still needs to be a nobody. She shouldn't be a Palpatine. Palpatine shouldn't be in the film at all. Rose should have had more screen time. Finn needs a character arc, etc. But these changes remove the villain and the driving force of the entire movie, as well as adding huge subplots to the film. Whereas I usually like to try and improve films within their original framework, this one I basically had to rewrite from scratch. I still tried to use elements and themes from the original script, but it's still very different, and also a very rough outline of what this film could have been. So, I hope you guys don't hate it, but here it goes. We open the film with the spark of resistance that Luke inspired at the end of the last movie. A planet occupied by the First Order is revolting against their overlords. Rey and Republic troops show up to help the fight. In this scene, I say we should have Rey whip out her new scrap metal orange lightsaber, solidifying her acceptance of her identity as a nobody. Kylo Ren hears of her arrival and diverts attention from the battle to go after her himself and to send troops after her as well. General Phasma protests and says that all those troops are needed for the battle, but Ren ignores her intent on killing Rey. The troops are overwhelmed by the planet's forces and the Republic resistance, and the battle is won. Poe asks the occupants of the planet for help against the First Order, but they refuse as they barely have enough troops to defend their planet as is. Poe is understanding but disappointed as their numbers are still very low from The Last Jedi. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Kylo Ren is searching for a Sith holocron that Snoke told him of when he was training him before Ren murdered him. The holocron reveals the location of a secret Sith temple on Korriban, ancient home of the Sith where an ultimate Sith weapon is hidden. Phasma is skeptical of Ren's desire to find the holocron as she feels he is unfocused on their ongoing conquest of the galaxy, searching for old relics. She meets with a group of First Order generals to discuss how Rin is becoming more and more out of control. Rin believes that the holocron is hidden on the planet of Pasana. A spy informs the resistance of Kylo's quest, and Leia orders Rey, Poe, and Chewie to go to the planet and find the holocron before Rin can get his hands on it. Meanwhile, emissaries for the Resistance are sent out to find systems willing to join them in the fight to repel the First Order. Finn, 3PO, and Rose are sent to a nearby system to try and recruit them to fight for the Resistance. Once they arrive, they are told that the First Order has conducted raids on them and has stolen away many of their children. Finn pledges to get them back. Back on Pasana, Rey and Poe meet up with Lando, who leads them to an old ruin where the Holocron may be hidden. At this point in the story, they are attacked 
attacked by the Knights of Rin, and are quickly overpowered. They are forced to flee with the Knights of Rin in pursuit. Kylo Ren descends into the ruins and retrieves the holocron. In this version, I'd really like to see the Knights of Ren in their full power, almost like the ringwraiths of the Star Wars universe. In a moment of pure desperation, Rey uses Force Lightning, killing some of the Knights. They manage to escape, but Rey is understandably shaken up. Poe, Lando, and Chewie are a little frightened of her. Alternatively, you could have Rey blow up the ship like she did before, as she thinks they are getting away with the holocron. Jenny Nicholson had an amazing idea that you could have this trigger a flashback to where she killed her own parents in the same way as they were flying away when she was a child. Dark, but potentially effective. Regardless, you could have the realization or a suppressed flashback revealing that her parents sold her because they were afraid of her. Kylo Ren returns to his ship with the holocron. As he opens it, Phasma approaches, troops in tow. Rin turns to find himself surrounded by stormtroopers. Phasma informs him that he has been relieved of duty. He says something along the lines of, Is this what you want? His own knights enter the room, backing Phasma. He says, Very well and ignites his lightsaber. What follows is an incredible display of Kylo Ren at peak power, using the force to blow troops away, cutting down stormtrooper after stormtrooper. But there's too many. Kylo tries to escape, cutting his way through his ship as more and more stormtroopers join the fight. Soon it dawns on him that it is not a small faction, but his entire army that is turned against him. He barely makes it to his ship alive, horribly wounded and close to death. He rockets away from his Star Destroyer and crashes lands on the planet below. This is the first chink in his armor, as his destiny as the leader of the First Order has been interrupted. On the planet below, Rey remains disturbed at her use of dark side power. She sneaks away from her friends during the night. As she makes her escape, she senses Kylo. She finds his crashed ship with him inside, near death. She ignites her lightsaber, about to finish him off. This could be a reflection of the night Luke considered killing Kylo so many years before. Instead, she kneels and treats his wounds. This seems to move him as it did in the original film when she force healed him, shaking him to his core. He tells her he knows where the Sith Temple is, and he might find answers there as to what his destiny is, and maybe she can find answers there as to what she is as well. She refuses at first, leaving him behind, but then she changes her mind, and agrees to go with him so she can destroy whatever is there. They leave for Korriban. Poe awakens to discover Rey gone, with a message stored in BB-8 that she has something she needs to do and that she'll meet up with them later. Poe is concerned, but there's not much he can do. He and Lando part ways. He asks Lando to join them in the fight. Lando refuses, saying that his fighting days are over, but promises to do what he can to drum up support for the Resistance. Poe and Chewie depart only to receive a message from Leia calling them back to base. Meanwhile, Finn and Rose land on a nearby planet where the First Order has a base with a training facility. This is where Finn was brought as a child and brainwashed. Finn and Rose take out two guards and take their armor, dressing up as stormtroopers. I like the idea that Finn is incredibly reluctant to put the stormtrooper helmet back on, but he does it anyway. They sneak in, find the kids, and lead the kids towards the exit. But one of the brainwashed kids alerts the storm stormtroopers to Finn and Rose's presence, screaming for help. Finn and Rose quickly find themselves surrounded. Across the galaxy on Korriban, Rey and Kylo land and discover an ancient Sith temple. Maybe you could add some fun Indiana Jones style traps here, maybe ancient defense droids or something like that. Just something to make the whole thing feel spookier and more dangerous. Regardless, they find themselves at the heart of the temple where they are suddenly surrounded by figures in black cloaks. They tell Rey and Kylo that they have waited for ages for the true heir of the Sith to arrive so that they could imbue onto them the power that belongs only to the true heir of the Sith. Kylo, usually confident but now unsure of himself, almost desperate, steps forward to accept this power. But the cultists say, not you, her. 
Meanwhile, at the Republic base, Leia, Poe, and the other Republic generals discuss a potential opening for them to strike the First Order. Half of the First Order fleet is across the galaxy dealing with an insurrection on one of their conquered planets. This leaves their main base of operations on Kajimi exposed. Poe is told that he will lead the attack and is promoted to general. He tries to contact Finn and receives no answer. Back at the First Order training facility, Finn and Rose are surrounded. They consider trying trying to shoot their way out, but then we have a moment reflecting the ending of The Last Jedi. Finn lowers his weapon, takes off his helmet, and motions for Rose to lower hers, saying, this isn't how we win. Turns to the rest of the stormtroopers and tells them his stormtrooper number. He says he was one of them, but then he realized he didn't have to follow the orders of the people who kidnapped and brainwashed him, and they didn't either that they are who they choose to be. He calls on them to join him and leave the First Order behind. At first, he receives no response. Stormtroopers step forward and arrest him and Rose. But then one trooper steps out of the crowd, takes off her helmet, and says, let them go. Then another and another, until the majority of the troopers have removed their helmets, exposing their faces. They join Finn and soon outnumber the troopers still loyal to the First Order. They arrest the remaining troopers and lock them away in the base of cell blocks. Finn and Rose return to their ship with the children. Finn receives contact from Poe, who tells him about the attack. Finn says that they will meet them there soon after returning the kids to their home planet. Poe says he's worried they won't have enough reinforcements even with their recruitment efforts. As they're speaking, a few of the stormtroopers show up. Finn tells them that they're free to go wherever they want, but the troopers say they want to strike back at the people who took so much from them. Besides, where else do they have to go? Finn smiles, gets back to Poe on the radio, and tells him they may not have to worry about reinforcements after all. Back on Korriban, Rey is shocked after the hooded figures tell her that she is the true heir of the Sith. Kylo protests, practically begging, saying that this is his birthright. They respond that no, it's Rey's birthright. That she has always held great power in the Force, more power than any in an age. That this is her destiny. That she's always known this. She's always felt she was meant for something greater. She's already dabbled in the dark. She's already felt its power in her veins. She is Sith and she cannot run away from what she is. Rey protests. They respond that with this power, she can bring peace to the galaxy, putting an end to the constant struggle between light and dark, saving her friends. All she has to do is accept this power. Kylo ignites his lightsaber, threatening the cultists, but Rey force pushes him up against a wall, holding him there as she considers. One of the cultists steps forward, presenting her with an object wrapped in cloth a double-bladed red lightsaber. Which, yes, I know that's fan servicey, but come on, it's cool. If you're gonna tease that, you, you gotta use it. She takes it, and she ignites it. She asks if this is the only way to bring peace to the galaxy, and they say, yes, it is. She turns to Kylo and says, you are right, this is my destiny. This is who I am. She accepts. The Sith cultists form a circle around her and transfer their power into her. She screams. The cultists fall dead onto the ground, spent. So does Kylo. At this point, I imagine Rey crackling with electric force energy. She tells Kylo it's finally time to end the war. Rin summons his lightsaber and attacks her. She bests him easily, running him through. He collapses to his knees as Rey sheathes her lightsaber. She leaves. She boards his ship and flies away, leaving him there alone. Now, this is the point where we get Kylo's redemption moment. Originally, I felt it would be best if there was no redemption for Kylo Ren. It's too much of a mirror for Vader's arc in the originals. But after seeing it play out in The Rise of Skywalker, I've warmed to the idea. So here's how I would have his redemption moment play out. Kylo collapses to the ground in the temple. He's broken. Everything he has fought for is gone. Across the galaxy, Leia is suddenly moved by a disturbance in the Force as Rey embraces the dark side. She sits down and Force projects herself across the galaxy. As Kylo kneels there on the ground, everything he ever believed in, gone, Leia appears next to him. She calls his name. I don't know what footage or audio they had from the late Carrie Fisher, but I'd love for her to say something like, it's not too late, or 
come back to us. He says he can't. She kneels next to him, reaching out her hand, and heals his wounds with the Force. She then vanishes, having spent her life for his. At this point, Han appears, and the scene would largely play out as it did in the original. I really liked the scene and felt it was moving. But alternatively, if you feel like it was cheap to have Han's memory pop up, you could have Luke's ghost appear. He says something like, She's gone, kid. She used the last of her strength to call you home. Kylo says he can't, that he's too far gone. Luke responds, Nobody's ever really gone. Your grandfather wasn't. Ben says, I don't know if I have the strength strength, this is who I am. Luke responds, no, you are who you say you are. You're not the next Luke Skywalker. You're not Darth Vader. You are who you choose to be. It's up to you. And with that, Luke vanishes. Ben slowly picks himself up, picks up his lightsaber, and then lets it drop from his fingers. He walks away, emerging from the temple, Ben Solo once again. Back at the Resistance command ship, they find that Leia has passed away. They mourn, and Poe is appointed general. Now, I'm still conflicted on having her pass away in a last-ditch attempt to get her son back. I feel like her dying is kind of a necessary catalyst to get him to come back to the light, but I don't know. It also doesn't totally sit well with me, so you could honestly have her still be around at the end of the movie, and it wouldn't change much. So, you know, whichever one you think works best. Now that Poe is a general, he gives a rousing speech about fighting for the memory of Leia and what she stood for as they arrive at the First Order base. Inside the base, Phasma is alerted that there are ships incoming. She mobilizes her troops and commands the First Order fleet to be recalled to their home base. The attack on the First Order commences. Poe leads the ships in the air, while Finn leads a new army of stormtroopers into battle on the ground. And yeah, an epic battle ensues with all that that entails. As they break into the main base, Finn comes face to face with Phasma, and they have an epic showdown like that in The Last Jedi. Finn defeats Phasma and the day almost seems won, but then the Knights of Ren show up, driving Finn and his forces back. And then Rey arrives. It's a joyous moment at first until Finn sees her holding a red lightsaber. Using her newfound dark side powers, she takes out horrifying amounts of stormtroopers and even resistance troopers, wreaking indiscriminate havoc and destruction. She goes head to head with the Knights of Ren, with stormtroopers, with resistance troopers. Finn pleads with Rey to stop, saying things like, This isn't you, Rey. She force pushes him away. Rey begins unleashing massive of amounts of force energy, destroying the forces around her. At this point, the entire First Order fleet shows up far earlier than expected. The Resistance begins taking huge losses. Finn tries to stop Rey, but she does not listen. Then, a new ship arrives. Ben Solo lands his ship, stepping out, igniting his grandfather's blue lightsaber, which he had repaired earlier in the film. He tells Rey to stop, that it's not too late. She refuses. They duel. She is incredibly fast, moving at inhuman speeds. Inevitably, she gains the upper hand, wounding him with her saber. He falls to the ground. She goes for the killing blow. Finn stands in the way. She stops. This isn't how we win, Ray. Not with hate, but with love. She hesitates, warring within herself. Ben slowly stands, extending his hand to her, telling her he can help her, that she can come back. She says that this is who she is, that it's too late, that she can't come back from this. To which he responds, my grandfather did, I did. She takes his hand. She tells Ben, this power, this hate, it's too much. He responds, then let me help you. He takes some of the power into himself, and together they release all of that force power into the atmosphere, rocking the ships above. The two collapse to the ground. The fleet above continues to tear through ships, a moment of despair as they think all is lost. Ray looks to Ben and Finn, saying, I'm sorry, I thought I could save you. Poe watches as his friends get picked off. The battle seems to be lost. Then, suddenly, the voice of Lando Calrissian over the radio. Fleets rocket into view. 
the fleets of planets that they rescued, the fleets of planets that they inspired, fleets of people from all over the galaxy answering the call of the Resistance. Down below, Finn pulls Rey to her feet in a shot mirroring this shot from The Force Awakens. With a yell, Rey, Ben, Finn, Chewie, and Rose charge back into the fray, with renewed fighting spirit overtaking the ground forces. First Order stormtroopers begin taking off their helmets, switching sides. Phasma watches as her army falls apart and suddenly finds the troopers around her removing their helmets as well. Blasters trained on her. The battle is won. Celebration ensues like it does in the original movie. I'd personally have Finn and Rose share a kiss at the celebration, solidifying the groundwork laid in The Last Jedi. If you don't like that, insert your OTP here. Finn watches as Rey sneaks away from the celebration, but he lets her go. Now, the very end is tricky. I kind of like the original ending, but it just doesn't really make sense that she'd go to Tatooine and bury Luke's lightsaber in a place that he hated. So I thought about maybe ending it on Jakku. She'd return to her old home, have a look around. A fellow scavenger approaches her, asks her who she is, and she replies, Ray, but this time smiling. She steps up on a hill and looks out at the setting sun, and Ben Solo steps up beside her, and they watch the sun set together. The issue with this ending is I have no idea idea why she'd go back to Jakku. There's not really a lot of thematic purpose for it. So I'm a little stumped as to how to end this. Maybe I'm just overthinking this. Uh, how about something simple like this? Ray finds Ben after the victory celebration about to leave on his ship. They talk about how they don't know what to do after the mistakes they've made and the crimes they've committed. So Ray says, let's find out together. And they leave to find their place in the galaxy. The end. Oh, and fit this guy in there somewhere. Not sure where, but he's great and he needs to be in here somewhere. And that's how I'd fix the rise of Skywalker and the entire sequel trilogy. And I'll be the first to admit it's honestly not perfect. I kind of feel like Kylo should have stayed evil, and Rey turning to the dark side would have been interesting, but I also feel that that potentially invalidates some of our character development in The Last Jedi. But I feel like this would be a better version of the story that J.J. and Chris Terrio originally set out to tell. And again, that's just my very rough and rushed vision of the sort of movie I would have liked to have seen. But feel free to take any bits of mine you might have enjoyed and combine it with other ideas you might have. And please be nice, don't yell at me if you hate my version, instead share in the comments below what your version of this trilogy would have looked like. I look forward to reading all of your ideas. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey guys, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe as that would help my channel grow. If you want to see more film fix, click the box on the right. If you want to see something else, click the box on the left. And subscribe for future videos by clicking that button in the middle. Thanks, and have a good day.